Here we go. In three, and two, and one. It's Sunday, June 21st, 2020. My name is Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. You may have said it, but we didn't hear it. Except for that. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Don't hurt oh. nobody with your bad self. And welcome to the Comes Out Loud, the Bear Podcast, with the journal, like, episode number 559, where we are uh, 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 assaulted by bad internet and bad air conditioners. Just bad. Yeah. Bad, bad, bad. Yeah. Mm mm mm. But I'm also in Texas, so I, I I need the air conditioner. I need the air conditioner more than anybody else. And I just realized I might actually have the... Uh, uh, wrong background. Oh, my God. But hey, it looks fine oh right now. God. I have no idea what you're talking about. See, it's 559. Yay. See? This is right. <laughs> Today is just going all the shit. Wow. But uh, uh, all I could think of is Aladdin here. Uh, apparently, it's a whole new pride. What are that? Gary's looking at me. Ladies this and gentlemen, it was Father's Day. Mm -hmm. Dad joke. It's official. <laughs> I mean, Look, I mean, it would have happened even if it wasn't Father's Day. True. No, it's true. I was just trying to make a, a realistic segue. I was trying to give you an out, but that's all right. Nope, you know, it's you okay. Know, you want to take that? No, he, I, I wasn't expecting it out. I was expecting that he, to go in. I, that was the segue. He. And who, who would not think of. Awful dad joke. Well, when you have a whole new pride, the first thing that a lot of people will think about is a whole new world. No, I disagree. I just think about a hole. <laughs> okay, for reference, for those of you out there, for some reason. Here you're getting to zero up again. What? Exactly. Anyway, I'm going to take the glasses off now. Because <sighs> it's, 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 Gary's just having bad internet issues today. Freezing all the time, trying to, try to say nice things. and I've been having bad internet issues apparently for several days. And I don't know what to do about it. So, okay. yeah. It might be a call the contact the, the company, the provider. Base. Because, Base. because my, my download speed is fine. That's not the issue. It's the upload speed. Like, yeah. That's where everything went to shit. Oh, I could see myself. Frozen. That's nice. <laughs> Watching the live feed. Mm -hmm. Live. Oh, yeah. That's fun. Yeah. Add that. <laughs> yeah. Maybe some weird still screen caps out of that, I can tell. Just hopefully don't catch you eating a hot dog. Makes me want a hot dog real bad. <laughs> 
Oh, bless uh, Jennifer Coolidge. Right. Mm-hmm. Right, right, right. Anyways, <laughs> we were saying a whole new pride. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to read what I wrote because <laughs> this is what was on my mind was 2020 isn't even halfway over just yet. And it's been a hell of a ride. So Pride has had to adjust and change because of COVID-19. So now some Prides are doing what's called virtual Pride. So instead mm-hmm. of having an actual festival, you know, with thousands of people showing up, um, you know, out of sense of public safety, we're actually doing di- things digitally. And then add on top of that, Black Lives Matter. Mm-hmm. And... Earl. Wait for it. All right, back, I think. Oh, my God. <laughs> this Girl. is going to make for a fun show. It's going to be a horrible episode, right? Got it. Be right back. I mean, we're not pausing the show. So we got Frozen Gary and uh, 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 David uh, are walking away. But we got Virtual Pride. We got Black Lives Matter. Boy, everything has been going to be a big old shitstorm. Uh, besides the fact that Trump is... I don't even know what the hell he's doing. I don't think he knows what he's doing. What? 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 Well, I was what? trying to what? vamp. Well, we had a frozen Gary and an, and a missing Damon. So, yeah, I was like, I said I would be right back. Yeah, I was I, I'm like TV in the living room. I don't know what the hell Trump Trump is doing. Like, I, I've like turned off on news. Like, I have no idea what's going on. Well, no, well, all the specifics. I just get the tidbits here and there, and haven't actually like. I'm like, I don't know if I can. <laughs> I mean, the I just can't. <laughs> well, well, he apparently had a rally yesterday and it was attended by 31 per 33% of the uh, capacity. Of the stadium that he was having the rally at. Oh, and and by the way, the rally was originally scheduled to happen on June 19th in Tulsa, Oklahoma. June 19th being Juneteenth, which is a big holiday for African Americans. And Tulsa, Oklahoma is where, like, a big, like, fucking awful thing to black people went down. So, yeah. There was that. There was that. It's like <laughs> it makes me wonder if Trump has any actual aides that do these research. Oh, or if they do the I'm research, sure. they tell him, and he says, "Fuck it, do it anyways." Maybe not in those those type terms, but it's like. This this is the year that proved why everybody is finally like putting the real proof to everybody the the big smack in the face for a lot of Americans hopefully to show how stupid they were in the first place to actually vote for Trump for those people who did and hopefully they're getting the message uh I do not think so. Yeah. <laughs> I I feel like the most recent stuff that has happened has polarized us further into the two camps, either supportive mm-hmm. or not supportive. Yep. I mean, it's yeah. Frothing at the mouth kind of support to the gleeful, like, you know, tap dancing on a grave kind of on the other side of the fence. Like, I mean, it's, it's very extreme. 
Um, it was, it was, I can't, I have to, I'd have to find it again, but one of the, like, like, what the fuck things I saw, like, recently. So it was at, I believe it was at the rally, or at the event yesterday. So I think you, Gary, you may have seen this, or maybe Paulo did, I can't remember, someone did. Anyway, um, someone was at the rally, which, by the way, you know, there's a pandemic going on, and 30,000, it was still 30-something, no, it wasn't 30,000, whatever. I think it was 30,000 people in a in a in a space confined space a lot of people weren't wearing masks a lot of people weren't social distancing blah 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 so there's that so preface with that but this guy is talking about how he was there at the rally he had friends or family members who have gotten covid-19 i believe one maybe even passed away i can't remember the video off the top of my head and that he knows it's out there and he agrees that it's a thing, but at the same time, he's not sure because it's all media and hype and bullshit. So he just came to the rally anyway. Literally, like you 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 know someone who has gotten it. More than one person, if I'm remembering correctly, and you're still going to attend. So, mm -hmm. like, yeah, like, <laughs> whatever. What the fuck ever. Just hasn't made a personal impact yet. Sure. Like, what one? One? COVID that you would. Like that would, that would make a difference to you. Mm hmm. But that is not always necessarily the case. Mm. You know, I just, I was talking and visiting someone today, and I told him, I've said I've moved into this mindset that there are two camps. There's the camp that is like thinking about the impact of your action. Mm hmm. Impact for our actions. Mm hmm self-centered one which is just like me a self-centered one which is just like you you're back maybe nope <laughs> <laughs> so i'm about over this right now <laughs> um so so we're kind of what so go ahead Jeff, every time you like utter like a little. Yeah, I'm trying to repeat what you said. You. I, I, I'm trying to repeat what you said when you froze. <laughs> yeah, well, it's not. Oh, that's true. Um, <laughs> I just everything's everything's different now, and. I just wanted to like kind of talk about, you know, that more than ever, I think in this year, our community has had a reckoning, has had, has had a come to like reckon. Yep. Uh, the only word that comes to mind is ignore a, that we do not live in an equitable, like, society mm -hmm. and we don't treat ourselves like with and file so yeah like in our for those that aren't seeing the youtube <laughs> ones um images that i included in our layout um one of them is the one that had uh kind of like made some waves a little bit not exactly that one but it started this whole like conversation about modifying the the gay pride flag quote unquote and mm -hmm. it's sort of, um referred to more as the um progress pride mm -hmm. 
particular aspect that's been added to it. And then there's another one that I really liked uh, that I saw, which was from uh, kind of the BLM uh, movement of sorts with the protest fist in multiple uh, skin presented. And, you know, the, the reality is, is that I was not yet born in 69 or 66 when the first things happened in our community. Mm -hmm. And even if I was, I wouldn't have been old enough to comprehend and understand. Fair. Mm -hmm. No offense. It was not white cisgender. That was like saying enough is enough first. Um, That didn't quite sound right. No. Lightus and I'm going to blink on the other one. There was a men's group. There were two main groups like in the 50s into the 60s in LGBT history that were trying to make advances, but they were very slow and very um, within the confines of the society. They were very prim and proper. Mm-hmm. So the whole presentation was we are just like you we look like you we walk and talk like you we you know breathe and act like we are no different than you um and that approach i think didn't go well with some members of the community they were like um yeah but that's not all of us and fuck that noise yep so it Um, happens when people are beaten down they just they push back eventually Yeah, the Medicine Society and the Daughters of Belitis. Yeah. Little gay history. I've been a liberal gay, liberal as in like pro the LGBTQ stuff because after I came out in college, my senior year project that I worked on in my hotel restaurant management degree was I created a menu Mm-hmm. For a restaurant called the Stonewall Inn. Mm, nice. so it was all red brick themed. It had like graffiti style spray paint. And then all of the menu items were based on either people and or moments from the liberation movement. Mm. Neat. <laughs> like the Mattachine Society. Was that a steak or a salad? <laughs> Like, seriously. (laughs) Wow. Uh, Oh, great. No, I'm kind of wondering. I think I. I'm kind of wondering where it would be like uh, uh, if we could. Turn off Gary's video and see if just audio works. We could try that. You want me to turn my camera off? Yeah. All right, fine. <laughs> now we're stuck with the Skype logo. Isn't that pretty? <laughs> well, let's just see. We'll see how that works. Just for a little bit. <laughs> I don't know if Jeff is able to swap in a an image instead. Yeah, I'm working on it. Do, do <laughs> I sound better? Is everything okay? Me, me, yeah, me, so me. far, we can hear yeah. you. Fucking Spectre. <laughs> keep, uh, keep going. I, I'm going to work my yeah, music. Keep, keep talking, Gary. That way, we'll see if this is actually going to work. Because <laughs> if it doesn't work, then like... Yeah, what's the point? Maybe not. Did you hear any? Did you hear any of that? No. No. I was talking nonstop the whole time, and then you're like, "Keep talking," and I'm like, (laughs) "I am." (laughs) Oh my god! Oh, this is a thing. This is a thing. This is a thing. (laughs) 
Anyway, um, oi, oi, oi. So, um, so the idea of this, um, it's been interesting. I will say this much. Um, the fact that, you know, COVID-19 is a thing has been, I think, difficult on everything, but in particular, it has been an issue with regards to, um, you know, the festivals and what we would normally be doing around this time. Um, because there is that whole, you know, social distancing. Mm -hmm. And because of that, um, it, it, it's, 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 it's had, it basically it's had people have to rethink what they want to do or what they're doing. Um, one of the things I've seen and enjoyed, I've heard, you know, I, I have heard of these virtual prides and, and, and that's great. Um, everything has gone virtual, you know, nowadays because of what happened. I mean, I wonder if the people at zoom ever thought that like how much their <laughs> sud- video much conferencing would suddenly, would... Like, would suddenly like take off because of what's going on here. Um, but on top of that, uh, there's the whole like coming up with new ways to do things. Um, mm-hmm. um, I've been particularly enjoying seeing the things that people come up with, um, uh, with pride celebrations. I've noticed a lot more people are starting to put their flags out. Um, like actually visu- visibly celebrating their pride, like at their homes or their apartments, they're putting their flags like in their windows or actually if they have a flagpole, actually putting them and letting them um, um, be out and about, um, which has been, it's it's been very interesting to see. It's been very interesting to see. I mean, I've been in my apartment this entire time, so I I, I really have having either here or there, and just yeah. watching uh, uh, specific types of videos on YouTube and avoiding a whole bunch of other stuff. Yeah. But it well, I'm not sure if it's avoiding or this is when I'm interested in it. And I'm just focusing on that and not necessarily looking at other things. Uh, but I I do know that there have been several like other events. So I don't know how, like, if you were looking at a virtual pride, like, how would you do a virtual pride, pride event? Let's say you wanted to do a, a pride fest for your community. Uh, you would have to uh, set up streaming on your YouTube or or, or or have a Twitch account or something for, for streaming. Then would you just have like somebody host it and and have interviews and or uh, host other people while they're doing what would normally be panels or something? Um, uh, uh, bands doing like a Zoom call version of their shows. <laughs> yeah, um, because I, I've seen a few videos of bands. Uh, uh, even they're all at their own home. They're playing their part and they sync it up. Of course, it's like a pre-recorded thing where they like. Mm -hmm. piece everything all together um and just having like because pride to me just seems like more of like a a fair or a festival at least from the Mm -hmm. i've actually attended where it's more of there's a place there's booths there's a parade Mm -hmm. they can't really do exactly that virtually um I, i mean you would definitely need to have somebody host it uh, as a host like we are hosts of this show and then they could like parade is like a group comes on they talk about themselves for for a little bit uh, but they don't have like flashy things happening or something um, mm. uh, to, to kind of, and it's not one of those things where you just merch down something 
get virtually yeah. marched down something. Yeah. I mean, there could be things like like doing it in Minecraft or, you know, that sort of thing <laughs> where you actually like use tool. I, I, I figure Minecraft because you can make stuff in that. And I've seen a lot of people like make certain things. You could probably have a virtual parade of something like that. Um, uh, but, uh, I, I, I've seen things like, uh, uh, a lot of RPG things like, um, Gary Khan, the, the uh, RPG con, uh, uh, run by, uh, Gary Gygax's son and family. Mm -hmm. Uh, they had an event where basically they had a bunch of groups playing D and D games, uh, or, or RPG games and they streamed it. So mm -hmm. that you can do, but when you're talking about something where it's a festival where this, where it's not like you have panels and, and like a normal, like a, like an actual convention where you have panels and uh, uh, basically some sort of t show type thing happening during it. In addition to the other things uh, such as the, uh, like a Gen Con would be, you would have games that you can sign up to play at different times and, and register for, or you would have, um, and, but you would also have the panels in addition to the vendor booths. Um, probably it's just a different type of animal. It's not really convention. It's just a fair, which unfortunately is really hard to do virtually, but we could still be proud and show our pride in different ways, um, such as doing a podcast, doing a stream, uh, the, doing events in a, in a game or, or something. But having that like established organization for a pride festival is just not going to work. But in addition to the flags that, that have been showing up, these additions, like what, what do you think? I, I really, really like the progress flag which is under you mm -hmm. which is the the pride flag with the uh chevrons of uh the trans and uh, a few additional um uh colors for additional skin colors like yes say. obviously the yeah. predominant is is the black because they've been highlights for things um, yeah. Whenever racial tensions come up, primarily it's in regards uh, mentioned and and happening with in the black community. So that's probably one of the reasons why that's more of the highlighted color. Because I've well, seen some criticisms of like, well, what about like other like like Asians and Latinos, blah blah blah. And I'm like, well, they're a darker color. <laughs> so it's, a pro. it's it's one of the it's it's. If I'm remembering the um, progress flag, the the first one, which was the Philadelphia um, one that came out of Philadelphia, the the obviously the black color was for African American African American and black um, cultures, and then the brown was the uh, was I hate to put others and I keep saying it like others, but it's for mm -hmm. you know um, Hispanic Asian you know the darker it's skins. meant to be those other colors that right. other, i don't want to use the word darker like that that's well compared to white color. everybody else is darker. well <laughs> it has a different connotation it. it kind of has a negative connotation so um but it's the it's the other you know other skin tones um um and i personally i like the designs I understand that there are some difficulty with um, there have been some controversies with the design, but the main reason for the designs is because these are voices that have been trying to be heard for, for many, many, many years and have not felt that they have been respected or included in the celebrations and the festivals and the the mm -hmm. getting of rights and attaining of rights. It, um, 
it's not that they weren't included before. It's more of they're emphasizing this part of the community being like, hey, you say you're doing general, but this part is having having trouble. We want to emphasize, we want to lift them up. We want the entire community to lift them up to, sh to make them visible. Mm -hmm. uh, so to, that when they don't have that tension, that, that stigma, that, Whatever mm -hmm. negative effect that people have, that eventually we can bring, we can, you know, equalize out, which is a very difficult thing to do in the first place. Mm -hmm. um, I, just, just in in general, everything is difficult to to do during the entire time. So, uh, mm -hmm. like, uh, I did a post on on Facebook recently recently like in the past couple of weeks um and uh yeah the thing was that black lives matter then my mom made a comment and i had to face palm because i feel like she should know better but she she commented all lives matter and i'm like mm. yeah i mean it's... yes but <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Yeah. that's not the point <laughs> yeah Correct. it has been okay gary was that you? Well, and, and I would for people to understand is like by adding more representation to the pride flag, it's about the fact that for decades, white cisgender individuals were leading our community mm -hmm. and the boards of nonprofits and entities that were supposed to represent our entire community were not representing our community. Mm hmm. And so I, you know, I, when the first concepts were brought up about adding additional colors, I was like, uh, honestly, I was resistant to it. Cause I was like, skin tone wasn't had, had nothing to do with the original, like six, actually seven colors. They all had meetings behind them and it had mm -hmm. nothing to do with like the. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. and therefore we've shifted to um, y'all are reacting <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's it's because we're not it just I'll, I'll just be honest we're not getting everything yeah it, it's, like it's bad. yeah like it's the it's the very frustrating like and i'm sure you're very frustrated but it's it's the whole like i i, I you and it, it, it come and the issue i think i'm having is that it comes in wait it doesn't like it doesn't just happen like every like 10 seconds or something along those lines, which are kind of give me a reason like, okay, well, wait a little bit. It literally is random. Just like, da -da -da, you'll be talking good for five, 10 seconds and then nothing. And then we'll hear like a little bit of something and then nothing. And then we'll hear something else. And I know it's frustrating. Girl, you don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> but I have a theory on something. So hang on. Uh, I'm going to attempt some. Okay. Gary's going to attempt something. Okay. Meanwhile, we'll continue our conversation. Yeah. It's. Again, it. Yeah. Like what Gary, you know, what I, the gist of what I think Gary was trying to say. Um, mm -hmm. The whole idea behind it was that. The whole, I think, I mean, the idea behind it was that um, people of color have been not, uh, how to put it, people of color have had issues in the gay community, like point blank period. Like, <laughs> like that's kind of the big one. Like, um, from just flat out racism to to prejudgments to fetishization to all kinds of other things um that 
don't make us feel included in the overall dialogues about the gay community or the the GLBT plus community. Um, mm-hmm. This is also true for you know trans individuals and uh, as well. You know we we always say um, LGBT or GLBTQIA, but oftentimes it's really just the G, <laughs> maybe the GL, <laughs> and other ones are kind of like often pushed to the side. Um, and unfortunately, those also include like, you know, people of color uh, as well. So mm-hmm. even if even if I as a gay male, um, it's difficult, like being in the community and having to deal with stuff. And, you know, I've, you know, I've been in the community for a long time, so I kind of know mm-hmm. uh, you have those issues. But and that's why I think this like that the fly the flag when it came out was i saw it and i go okay i get why and i understand why but that's because i i know why if that makes sense um okay um i think i know i i think i know why Mm -hmm. because i you know it's my community (laughs) <laughs> it's me right 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 no you know, like, like, just like just like uh right now right the, the past couple uh minute or two i basically had a screen of just you yeah hi i wanted to <laughs> highlight you and then i'm like oh uh, yeah this this is you this is you this is your rant here <laughs> i'm just gonna give you the entire platform i now have yeah. a screen so i could yeah. zoom in to just you nice because it, really i have to say this i'm privileged i'm okay. gonna say that right now i am i i mean i'm a white cis white male mm-hmm. right a mm-hmm. that that's like privilege 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 right there and i mean you throw in gay knocks it down just a little bit but then i'm still a, a, a gay we still got that that privilege in there Mm-hmm. I admit it. I don't want this privilege. I'm just getting it, and I'm like, I don't want this. <laughs> <laughs> it's the, I, and the thing, it's the it's like how part... I say like 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 I'm turned on by everybody, uh, whatever color. Usually, the reason why I, I'd be turned on on and off of you has nothing to do with with skin color. It it all yeah. has to do with just like facial features, the way you do your hair. Uh, uh, your your personality, uh, uh, your belly, uh, your penis. <laughs> you know, it. There, there's all these other physical tra- traits. Skin color, mm-hmm. not not an object for me. Although I do have to say that there are things where certain features or certain uh, uh, skin colors are uh, uh, kind of like emphasized or something like that. That for me, I don't know. I, I can't, yeah. ha- I don't have any specific examples. There could be like that, but it's always this combinations of things. But then I'd look at, at society in general for other things that are happening. And I'm like, dude, yeah, I am white. I am a cis white <laughs> and I'm, I'm male. I'm like, Oh God, I'm so privileged and I don't want it. Yeah, and and it, this is this is why I I stay at home and and everything because I, 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 I well besides the fact that I'm like super shy and and fairly mm-hmm. socially awkward and everything so there's there's lots of other factors but yeah. but I don't want to necessarily exercise that privilege because I don't want it yeah. uh, and then and I'm like why can't Everybody else, no matter what, get the same things that I can, you know, and it's drives me insane and bonkers. The fact that makes me kind of upset that I'm. Mm-hmm. Um, it, 
it's again, it's a it is a I'll just put it like this. It's a complicated order. Mm-hmm. Like to to be to be blunt. Like it's a complicated order. And there are so many factors at play that it becomes more difficult to navigate, if that makes sense. I don't know if that makes sense, but it's it's a it's a it's a weird you know, fucked up overall kind of, you know, world. And this year, I think in particular, has come made more more of these things come to light. Mm-hmm. So, well, Gary, are you there? Hello. Hi. Hi. Hey. Yes, we can hear you. A caller? You're on the line. Oh, my God. Hi. Love the show. <laughs> Sorry. Like, it has to be under these circumstances. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, uh, I guess, like, this is the thing that came, that was the revol... Re- uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What, do I, what word am I trying to use? Not revolution. Revelation? Uh, revelation. Thank you. The other one. Um, <laughs> Right. So the revelation to me this year was I have been part of the problem for years, did not know I was a part of the problem for years because racism in our community and the LGBTQIA community is not specific to us. It is intrinsic systemically in our society. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we are just as like, I don't want to say guilty, but just as like, you know, problematically involved as anybody is. And I think there's been some struggle because no offense, uh, this is going to be probably pretty polarizing. Gays think very highly of themselves. I mean, um, no, 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 it's true. <laughs> Fact. They, <laughs> we struggle so much with our own identity to own it, to come to terms with it, to be queer, to be femme, to be dom, to be sub, like to be a pup, like, to be kinky, to be queeny, like, to be butch, like, to be all these things, we fight so hard to get that, Mm -hmm. and so we're like, I got this, like, I figured my shit out, I (laughs) own who I am, my life is now, like, in a place that I, you know, am working towards it, if not successfully making it what it is, and we've added this whole other thing that's like, yeah, but, yeah, but you racist, (laughs) and it's like, that's not, oh, no, not me. Like, you know, I have I have friends of color. I fuck people of color. Like, you know, I can't be racist. You know, we say <laughs> these inane, ridiculous things because we're we're ignorant. We can't understand what it's like to be treated a certain way that has some parallels, but it is certainly not the same as other people mm-hmm. who fear their livelihood. Like they live in an anxiety PTSD cycle often. Yeah. Consistently. Now yeah. I'm not dismissing and saying that LGBTQIA people don't have that. Mm-hmm. There are people out there who are in very bad circumstances and, and that are abusive and absolutely, you know, can can relate, but mm-hmm. I didn't. I was a white I'm a white gay male. Like, come on. <laughs> and you know, I went to a I went to a middle class uh, elementary school. I don't hardly mm. remember there being any people of color in my elementary school. There was a there was a few, but mm. you know, as a as a beautiful person of color, friend of mine once said, you know, how many pepper sprinkles were on that? Um, <laughs> you know, like, it's pretty wow. <laughs> well, it's true. <laughs> Well, that white gravy don't have very much black pepper in it. <laughs> so, you know, when, you know, and that it is what it is. You know, I, I grew up in that and I really wasn't around individuals of color until I went to college. You know, I had the blessing of higher education to give me experiences to learn stuff. But even then, you know, I'm in my mid 40s now and I'm still learning stuff and and. And the biggest thing I've been seeing, especially from people I look up to, is that there's been a lot of, you know what, I need to take a seat. I need to shut up. I need to listen more. I need to be available. I need to try to learn because this is not my reality. My reality is incredibly privileged. My reality is I can go wherever I want and do whatever I want 
most of the time without fearing things. Now, that's not always true because yeah. there have mm-hmm. been several times in my life that I have been hyper aware of my surroundings. Oh, yeah. And been concerned that, like, you know, to, to make a really bad movie, you know, quote, girl, you in danger. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, and, not, a, not a good part of town, like, not not a good place. You know, yeah. you, you mer- and, you're kind of sticking out, so... And that's sort of the 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 one of the things I think most people I well I'll put it like this that gay people gay men tend to think is similar. Mm. You know, you're gay, so you 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 know what it's like to live in fear. You have the you know, especially when you're not out, you have those kind of feelings and thoughts that you you know that that feeling. But that's not the same. Like that. Right. Is, I simply put, I, that is not the same. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I, and this is what occurred to me, Damon, and I hope this makes sense to our listeners and viewers. Um, I have lived in fear of homophobia. Mm-hmm. I have lived in fear of being a victim of a hate crime. I have never been victimized or lived in fear of racism. Mm-hmm. which is different people people have not hated on me for the color of my skin now i have very very minimally just a couple of times in my life been in circumstances where i am not <laughs> in the majority by any means mm-hmm. i have been in an establishment where uh white is like a speck of dandruff on a black background like like yeah okay I I am I am not. <laughs> like, yeah. Like I am I am not a part of this and in in each of those the reason I bring it up is because I was not there with a per- person of color friend. Mm-hmm. Like I was not with somebody who could be my guide mm-hmm. or look out for me and be like he cool, you know, yeah. or what I don't know. Like it was awful to say that. You know, like no, whoever No, but I get what you mean. He vouched for, for you. Vouched for you. Right. Yeah. I I know what you mean. So I'm like, "Oh, this yeah. is a different walk of life. I do not know this. Yeah. Very interesting. And, and it's like I'll I'll say this, like being aware of that and understanding that like sometimes, like you said, Gary, like I need to take a seat, talk less and listen more. Like that's like like big step number one in regards to everything that's going on with like black lives matter and, and everything else currently in this current atmosphere. (laughs) Cause girl 2020, like you said, like this has been a year. (laughs) And it's not, it's not even been a half a year yet. I know (laughs) it's June 21st children. We got like another, what, 10 days, nine days, whatever to get through before Uh we are quote unquote, halfway through the months of the year true yeah and it's it, it has been a thing it has been it has been <laughs> it has been like everything that you could ever i mean not even everything you could ever imagine because i don't think i would have ever imagined half of the shit that's going on right now um well some of the things to be fair yeah that's something that more than likely I mean, it has been happening, and continues to happen. We, Trump we know said what, what? we talked about. Well, not just that, but just the, the 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 just like the you know the reason like we've been there have been the protests and riots and marches and and speeches and uh, you know you know the the consistent constant sometimes never ending you know police brutality against people of color. So there's that, but that. Can, that pretty much happens all the time, and you know, whatever. But not that sounds no, 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 But please, you know what I mean. David, <laughs> I know what you, Nate, David, I know what you mean, but please don't say whatever. Like, yeah, that's the, that's the problem. That's yeah. the problem is like we were not aware. Yeah. Like, here's here's one of the craziest things that has happened in technology wise. Like a white man who helped bring forward technology via the iPhone has made possible for like disparate communities to be like. See this shit? See this motherfucker? Like, this is the shit that's been going on for decades to centuries, nonstop. Y'all True. just pay attention because you haven't been listening. You haven't been watching. 
Yeah. Like you haven't been having our backs. Like that's the part that is so yeah. sad to me is like that we had to have indisputable proof mm-hmm. that people's lives are being taken because we're turning a blind eye because we try to like believe in the betterment of people mm-hmm. and we are having a reckoning and we're being like, you know what? People yeah. are shit. Yeah. Like, COVID-19 has brought to the forefront. We're just assholes. Like, I mean, you know, <laughs> yeah. I mean, let, let's, yeah. If we're going to spill tea, let's spill that tea. Um, <laughs> like, like, come on. Um, that's, like 100% fact that has been the thing overall like cops and and police and the system that keeps all of this go happening it's been a thing it has been a cycle it has been a relentless cycle of of racism I'm just gonna call it like it is Mm -hmm. Um, for for long 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 time I'm not gonna even point like I mean we could hell but juneteenth we could even say fucking that because like slaves were freed in january i think january 1866 or something like that like 1863 and they weren't truly freed until the amendment that happened in like 1866 or 1867 it's you know like like just like that (laughs) like let's we can start with that and kind of go from there um, even, and that's, I'm not talking like, that's not even a start. We can, there's a lot more before that, but in, in general, it is a system that has been built for the betterment of white men. Mm-hmm. And because of that, we constantly have to tell you and hopefully show you that it's it's there and like you said gary the not you know now that we can literally record and post videos and take pictures like without having to go wait and get it you know um developed and all that stuff like we 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 can now kind of show you and get it out there think to like social media which good and bad but in general it, it makes it more it makes it faster it gets it out the information out there quicker and it kind of makes people open their eyes. And I, and I will, and I hate to say this, but like COVID-19 keeping people at home for the most part has in some ways maybe helped that if that makes sense, you know, it totally, it totally does because NPR had this amazing, um, so they have a, a show called Code Switch, mm-hmm. and uh, it could be available as a podcast that you can download. And I, I've been aware of it for a long time. I haven't really listened to it. But today they loaded their a most recent episode of Code Switch where they talk about some things. And one of the things that comes up in it, I'm pretty sure it was in that episode. I listened to a lot of podcasts today. So my apologies. Um, there was a thing about how, like, uh, if uh, if it wasn't that, then it was a TED talk. They talked about like how the world goes through these revolutionary moments when pandemics occur because everybody basically has to stay in place. You know, you have to stay at home. You have to protect yourself to try to stay mm-hmm. alive. But when you do that, like your world gets smaller and you end up like having to focus on other things. Mm -hmm. And in today's technology age, we completely changed from like, you know, me, 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 me. And like, like, like in Comic Comet and, you know, where's all my digital, like, you know, feedback. Like I want I want my hormonal trip to keep my brain buzzing. Like a lot of that got subverted because it was like now you got to stay home and like there's not as much to do. So -hmm. you had no choice but to try to get your like fix of being active quote unquote via a virtual world Mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden we're finding out all this shit like that we didn't have time for before yeah i mean that's short my shorthand of of what i took away from it and i was like oh yeah like like they said it is like it was really interesting because one woman said i cannot say definitively that white people are are waking up to racism she says i think the pandemic made them start paying attention Mm. and that is disappointing because we would like to think better of ourselves and be like, oh, yeah, you know, 
why white people are starting to like catch on to it and be aware like oh you know actually there's some fucked up shit going on out there mm -hmm. but yeah. the only way we saw the fucked up shit was because we had the time to pay attention mm -hmm. because we're all sitting at home and then you know law enforcement is literally taking the lives of people and unjustifiably like that's mm -hmm. the part i think that has outraged the nation so much is like like i've seen this meme in the past day or so that's like you do realize that even bad bad people don't deserve to die mm -hmm. like like at the at the hands of law enforcement yeah like mm -hmm. you know i mean it, it's really interesting it's kind of turning the whole thing and basically saying to people like pay attention like Mm -hmm. the, the concept of law enforcement is not to kill people it's to enforce the law like that's where things have gone so far askew yeah and yeah it, it, like and I'll, I'll i'll put it like this to me it has always been a it has always been there like i've known about it you know i won't say my parents ever gave me the quote the talk like you've you've if you well you might not have because you're not so um and the talk basically is like you're black and the world out there is is basically it to for lack of a better phrase against you and you're going to have to be careful you're going to have to do the best you can because cops are bad. <laughs> Authority is, you know, they're, they're, the world is not for you. As much as we want to believe that it is, it's, it's, there are people out there that believe that it is not. And uh, unfortunately, a lot of those people are people who are in power, are in law enforcement and and what have you and are doing these awful things so you have to protect yourself do the best that you can to protect yourself having said that as you mentioned gary still there's not a reason for these people to get shot wet or die in some awful way while under the protection of the police protection with their quote unquote <laughs> yeah um because yeah it, it it really is a thing it is a thing and um the worst part is you can essentially do everything right and still die if right. That, like the, like, yeah. It's the ultimate shitty like hand to be dealt. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. you do everything as expected per per the justice system, but what mm -hmm. we call like law, and you still like yeah don't like come out mm -hmm. even. Like that's what the whole point of equity about it. That's where racism is systemic and it's problematic because you know I think about it where I work at there are not many people of color there. I've been thinking about that for the past month plus now, since all of this has really been like at the forefront, consistently out there from George Floyd, you know, to Breonna Taylor months ago. Like, I mean, these mm -hmm. things, and I'm just like, I wonder how my coworkers feel about this because mm. it's weirdly not being talked about. And understandably, like people may feel very timid about discussing it because of one, it's a work environment and two, we work in government, um, mm -hmm. you know, so, but, you know, I decided as my pitiful way of like recognizing some things and our state governor recognizing Juneteenth as a state holiday, mm -hmm. um, it didn't affect me on the county level. I put a sign on my door, ex like with the statement about the governor recognizing Juneteenth mm -hmm. and the history behind it and the flag um, that came out of it from Texas. Because mm -hmm. I was like, some of y'all in here probably need a little education. So here we go. And <laughs> I was expecting to get talked to about it. Because I mm. I haven't been aware of whether or not that's crossing a line. Like where mm. and when and how can you discuss these things? Yeah. Um, 
you know, but I was like, this is, this is kind of the way I feel about it. Like, you know, we, we need to put some education up here to be fair mm-hmm. prior to this. I've put some other things on my door. Like most recently it was about Larry Kramer, the AIDS activist passing away. Mm-hmm. Um, to me, that made logical sense. I'm an HIV public health person. So yeah, this, this, this one was kind of stepping out beyond the box, but like, this whole thing that's going on is like, you know, we're, where yeah. are we in this stuff and and yeah how fucked up is it that we as a society have been holding people back restricting them restraining them like mm-hmm. physically and in other ways keeping them yeah. from having you know yeah equity so to speak yeah and and um gosh how, how do i put um Simply, I mean, simply put, like it, the, the, the thing I, I love the most that I have seen overall, and it's one of the things I've been, I've, I've enjoyed, um, is there are allies out there, you know, that are taking the steps to, to be not just, I'm not racist, but anti-racist. Mm-hmm. Um, that's been a really big thing. Like, and I'm, I'm, I've been seeing that kind of going forward and I'm, I'm personally, I'm appreciating it. Um, hell, just this fucking morning, I had an issue with the, uh, uh, inter- uh, online friend of mine having to deal with some stuff. And, um, I try to be respectful and provide education and knowledge and then I went to bed because it was two in the morning. This was like last night, early this morning. And I went to fucking bed because I did I did not have time. I, I'm tired. <laughs> I, I'm tired of having to have this conversation and have to educate and have to do this because it to be blunt, the information's out there. It, it's up to you to like pick up that information educate yourselves as well. And I know sometimes it's difficult because there's a lot of misconceptions, but like are misinformation, but there are resources available that you can use to find the proper information if you want to learn. Uh, I I think the difficulty is, is like everybody in their own way gets tired for various reasons mm -hmm. and they're not comparable, but we think they are like, it's a, it's a really fucked up person perspective and be like why should i have to teach you about like like equality for like mm-hmm. me because i love people of the same gender like what the hell like yeah give it the time girlfriend i got time for this yeah but the reality is there will always be an education process that has mm-hmm. to happen and it gets yeah. harder the further we get away from the events like mm-hmm. the, the reality of what has happened you know if it if it wasn't for art Honestly, for entertainment, I don't think I would have known about the Compton Cafeteria mm. riot situation in San Francisco. I fucking wasn't taught that. First of all, I wasn't taught it in regular school. And mm. second of all, I didn't even learn about that in college when I learned about Stonewall. Like, in the things that I learned, I didn't learn about that. So mm-hmm. there's beautiful whitewashing. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. And then... um completely out of my head where I was going to use another example um, oh and then I just watched on Hulu uh, HBO via Hulu I think is how it's working a lot of HBO content on Hulu at least this weekend has been made available so I watched Watchmen the not the film but the television series quote unquote, yeah the kind of the the continuation the Damon Lindelof like in the future like what could have happened in that like alternate world universe thing um it's eight or nine episodes it was astounding but a huge piece of it is about race like and it starts off with the tulsa massacre of black wall street which a lot of people when this aired said i didn't know shit about this like i've never even heard of it didn't know that this thing existed that we basically committed this fucked up like war Slash genocide event on a successful community within our own U.S. I mean, it's just like, hello. 
Um, and if you watch the whole series, and I really recommend you do, if you kind of are into that uh, stuff, as far as like what the Watchmen sci-fi reality stuff is, um, it goes further into race and in, in directions I wasn't prepared for. Uh, yeah, towards the end, I was just like, oh, oh, okay, yeah, we're we're not shying away from that, just like we didn't shy away from butt sex because that was a thing on screen. Um, okay, got it. Like. <laughs> I was I was not ready for for dudes banging butt, um, but that happens in the series. Just so you know, um, I mean it's not X rated, but <laughs> it was queer as folk. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, but yeah, it's it, yeah, and um, yeah, like I mean, I'll I'll put it out there. Like I didn't know what Juneteenth was until I moved here. So. T- 20, 20, like 17 years ago, sorry. Eight, 17, 18 years ago is when I moved here. I have ne- I had never heard of Juneteenth. And I don't know why. And I'm actually probably will be reaching out to my mom and asking about that. But um, I, I have a, a possible explanation that I won't get into in here. But... Um, I don't recall it being a thing and it is possible that it was a thing and I just wasn't aware. Um, but I did you know, I didn't know what it was until I moved here. Mm-hmm. So, and that's very weird to me, but that also goes to show you how difficult and how different education is and how whitewashed as Gary put it, um, our education, just education system is. So, um, history is uh, history yeah. is made by the winners, and now it's our turn. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Sorry. true. Go from no, a reduced Shakespeare Company play. Yeah, I mean that's, um, but kind of to 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 bring it a little back to Pride and stuff. Um, one of the things that has happened for me, um, you know, as everyone knows, I've been furloughed and I've not been able to, I've not been working. Um, I have had an opportunity just to kind of like, I've been taking in information, um, looking at things, reading things, mm-hmm. catching up on things that I was not 100% aware of. And um, because even as a black gay male, I still had my own bubble. We all have those bubbles that we put around ourselves. We know, you know, um, and it has given me the opportunity to open my eyes a lot more to what is going on, um, and to take personal pride in myself and ownership of the issues that I personally have. Um, cause I was one of those people that was not a big, like I was not big into politics. Like to me, it wasn't a big, it wasn't a big deal. I'll just be honest with you. It was not a big deal. Um, and that has slowly changed, especially within the past four years. Wonder why. Um, but, <laughs> but it, the thing that I think that has been helpful and beneficial to me has been that there are allies out there. Um, it's like the thing this morning when I woke up um, this morning or this afternoon, well, this morning, it was this morning when I woke up days blur when you don't have to work. Just mm-hmm. saying. <laughs> uh-huh. True. True statement. So, <laughs> but anyway, um, is so the the post a friend of mine had made and everything there were allies there talking and giving the effort like trying to in some way educate this person on why what they're saying and feeling is a, is smaller in comparison to bigger issue. Um, that's going on and it's um, unfortunate 
you know, a lot, I'm sure we're all kind of dealing with it in our own ways. Um, we're having the statements of friends and friends on like Facebook and Twitter and whatever, you know, are pointing out their beliefs. And those are kind of anti what we want to see the world to be. You know, Mm -hmm. I think Jeff, you had mentioned your mother, you know, you would put something or someone had put something about black lives matter. And she kind of said, all lives matter kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, a hopeful teaching moment. You know, um, we all know that (laughs) we we all know all lives matter because life matters. But right now, (laughs) <laughs> let's let's we're just focusing it, yeah we're focusing and that doesn't mean that, that oh gosh that doesn't mean we care about these lives more it's just that we are focusing on them now because they are the ones that are hurt now and are still hurting now and my over you know our hope is to once not say once we fix that because that's going to be a long a while <laughs> um, once we fix that we can focus on what the next thing but it is like our hope is that it will make things easier for everyone mm-hmm. well and, and I mean the biggest thing that I think folks are maybe not paying attention to is the reason why Black Lives Matter is like so paramount and important to like this moment in society has to do with the fact that like well yes all lives matter disproportionately Mm -hmm. the black community is like no offense it's at war like Mm -hmm. it is trying to survive like and we take for granted as an american society specifically that surviving is an innate ability you know what i mean like everybody Mm -hmm. has that opportunity it's not a big deal and it's like oh no it is a big deal and definitively the black community people of color have a harder time at it hence like we're we're not only shining a spotlight but working to make changes to Mm -hmm. affect that um you know like i mean i was reading about this blew my mind and I think it was an NPR uh, article about how I think it's in Minneapolis, Minnesota, that like the majority of land um, legal paperwork, the deeds or the grants or or whatever, have written into them a clause. Of, and it's a certain wording, but it's basically about racial disparity that like it's racism specifically written into it on purpose that, it, that mm. the property could not be sold to people basically who aren't white like Mm. it's crazy i was like wait what and they're like showing this map of how like like clearly certain like areas of the city are Uh, where the people of color live it is redlining integrated yeah i mean it was just i was like really 2020 like i might i might have i might have bought this in the 80s the 90s hell even in the aughts but I'm just like, really? Like, this is still a thing? Like, how crazy yeah. is that? Well, I, that, I also think that... me showing my ignorance. Yeah, and, and I think part of it is that was written, like, way back when. And just nobody bothered to go in and change anything. Or right, it was just completely forgot why, about. Well, but why didn't people pay attention to it? Like, that's the part that's blowing my mind is like, wait, what? Like, this has to be brought up now? Like, or were we not listening? Is that more mm-hmm. maybe the bigger issue? Is that, you know, like, I, I would not be surprised more and more and more we get people that come forward and be like, I've been trying to tell you, <laughs> you know, for X amount of time. Here's all the times I raised the flag, you know, bonked the horn, like, did everything I could to get you to fucking pay yeah. attention. And be like, yeah. you were like, la, 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 Starbucks. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> I mean, whatever. Just fucking weren't paying or attention or looking or giving any credit or. You know, it was falling on deaf ears, some bullshit. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, it's it, it takes people being advocates and pointing out and saying things, you know, like um, we're all friends with someone who works in the legal justice system who has been open about their experiences. Mm-hmm. And I'm not surprised to have basically read them saying, yep, could have told you. <laughs> White dude, lawyer. Yeah, see it all the time. Not surprised. Y'all should catch up. I mean, like, and how sad is that? I mean, it's just humiliating. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's. It's. Oh. <laughs> I'm having the worst time trying to get this out. It is. Frustrating to, like you said, it is like, oh, my God, mind blowing that. This is a, you know, out there. That this is in like the laws. Um, it is. I think that times a hundred or a thousand to know that to live in that. If that makes sense, right. like, you know, the rules are the you know, the the rule book, <laughs> for lack of a better phrase, the rule book in and of itself. Um, was written without consideration of you. Um, and that is, I hate to say, that is the biggest, like, overall systematic problem. Right. The rule book, the rules, everything was written either to to, to be stacked against you from the get-go. So... Um, when like when you are born into this country, and you are a person of color, particularly you know, the the rule book pretty much was never written for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, like that's kind of like to me the big T. Like, <laughs> and I know we have other fights. You know, we just got a landmark victory this week in regards to, you know, um, gay employment rights, GLBT employment rights. Um, and that's a wonderful victory to celebrate. Mm-hmm. But there's still a much larger problem there, <laughs> you know. And I'm not talking about just the, the, the Black Lives Matter, you know, things. I'm talking like for gay people like there's still other problems there so while it's a cause to celebrate let's not lose focus let's not lose sight of the goals that are out there it's great it's wonderful you know thank god like i hate to say it like i don't i can't believe that this is still a thing (laughs) that you could technically still be fired well not anymore but like until what monday was it Monday? I think Monday or Tuesday. Mm, yeah, I mean it's within the past week for sure. Yeah, you know, um, prior to Monday, <laughs> you could be fired in several states for being GLBT, like, and 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 now that's not that's no longer true. Um, so yay, great, but let's keep it going. Let's keep, don't, you know, again, like I I say it, I've said it enough, like a lot, like don't lose sight. Let's stay focused. Get like Jeff, you mentioned, like, this is what we're focusing on, but yes, there are other things going on. And the hope is that it'll hopefully all get better, but it is going to take time. And it, the, the worst part is it will be uncomfortable because it is literally shifting the worldview of the majority, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, it's true. Yeah. So that's it. You're going to be uncomfortable. Like, 
you're going to have, and you're just, I hate to say it, you're going to have to sit in that uncomfortability, uncomfortable spot, you know, for a while. No, but, say change is not easy. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to have to sit in that shitty diaper for a while, but it will, it'll get taken off and you'll get cleaned up. The baby powder will be put on. A fresh new diaper will be up, and hopefully that fresh new diaper is a wonderful new world. Like, <laughs> to use an awful Interesting. analogy. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> to use a really awful analogy. Sorry. Just, it's the thing that came to my mind as You're I started talking. I am, actually, I'm not sorry. <laughs> You're no, not sorry. Like, I mean, I, I thought the analogy was really interesting because you were like, I recognize that you are sitting in, like, in being uncomfortable and that's just the way it is. Like, like I, it relates to like the memes that I've seen where it's like, if you think like, if you think a protest is an inconvenience, try being like racially profiled. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah, yeah. these concepts where it's like, oh, you don't even know. Like sure. yeah. you, you need to get with like, <laughs> and have some comprehension. Like this is just the beginning of the awakening child. Like you, mm-hmm. there is so much more to come out of it. And I'm like, oh, all right. Like I, I'm figuring it out as I go along. And that's why like, I've basically kept my mouth shut, you know, in person and online. Cause I'm like, I, I have nothing to contribute other than making myself more of an asshat on this. So why would I, why would I be, you know, willing to do so other than to simply say, uh, I am an asshat, like <laughs> <laughs> that I have been unintentionally un- unknowingly racist in my past. Like yeah, yeah. So I mean, I mean, in some sense, we're all a little bit racist, according to Avenue Q. Yeah. Um, and I and I think that you know, there's a lot of different issues behind that. One of it is is that everybody systemically benefits or doesn't benefit. The majority do not benefit. Actually, well, no, I guess I would say I guess the majority benefit from racism. That's hard to yeah. say, um, you know, and the <laughs> the reality is that we just we don't know mm-hmm. and we're going to figure it out as we go along. But, you know, it's to me, it's it's like anything else. It's like, well, you need to pay attention and let the subject matter experts mm-hmm. come come to the front and talk about and explain and we get to say things when the time is right and now is not the right time Mm -hmm. listen to your sneeze (laughs) but yeah it's it's yeah i mean what did it think okay um one of the things I actually have, like, I enjoyed, or I, well, I say enjoyed, but one of the things I had the opportunity to do, um, um, so Oprah Winfrey hosted, and it was broadcast, like, these, um, where do we go from here? And she had these um, black leaders and spokespersons on this, basically having a dialogue about what has been going on and the whole goal of it was to try to talk about what do we do from here and um i had to admit it was it is difficult and uncomfortable even for me to like sit and listen to these people speak on the truths of the matter because it is true. Like, I, you know, there come some things that even I am not aware of. I know some things, but I don't know everything. And I think that's true for most people. And it was very interesting to have to listen to this conversation. And then afterwards, um, Jim and I had conversations about what we just watched because we watched it together. Mm-hmm. And, it was 
a wonderful time and granted it was just us, but it was still a wonderful moment to have because we were able to, he was able to understand some of the things that I have been feeling and he kind of let me speak on it. And instead of him, (laughs) him telling me, he allowed me to tell him. It's 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 you learning from some of our our past episodes with uh, our our sex therapist Edward Angelina Cook. Yeah, we're all like it was very it, it was very interesting, and I really really appreciate appreciative of it. Um, and having that opportunity to talk about it and be uncomfortable and have it be private, if that makes sense. Um was beneficial because there is a lot this this is my like i think at one point gary you mentioned like i've had like anxiety with all of this for a long for a while and everything that's been going on all the you know protests and like i know like i have a feeling like what's going to happen because people are going to start blaming things on the fact that the protests were going on uh, with COVID 19 and you know because that's the other thing like we're still like having to deal with too is we're still in the middle of a pandemic and numbers aren't getting better in, in a lot of States, if not all. And we're still having issues. I just went to, um, we went to the supermarket yesterday and I was appalled at the number of people not wearing a mask and not, you know, following social distancing and all of these things. And the, the thing that, that pissed me off the most <laughs> was, yes, it was mostly the general public, but there were some employees that would wear the mask just up to here, up to their nostrils, which doesn't help. <laughs> like if you're gonna wear the fucking mask, wear it properly. And I get that you have to wear it, you know, especially if you're an employee right now. But it doesn't help. That's the same to me as if you cut out a fucking hole and let your mouth speak through the mask, because we've seen that shit too. Like, and it it it's just a, it's like. I, I think one of the things you said, Gary, to kind of bring it all together is like it, you know, it's a humanity issue. You know, like let's start being more respectful to our fellow humans. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if if you we know. can, if like, we can, I mean, like, and I and the reason I say it that way is like I have doubts. Mm, like, mm. I I try to be optimistic. I try to be hopeful. But there are times that, you know, as much as I've disappointed other people, other people disappoint me. Mm-hmm. And that's not an easy place to be in, you know, to be like, well, maybe not. Yeah. And I will say this because it was something that came up this morning. You have everyone essentially, especially the majority i'll keep it like that you have two choices you can either stay complacent let the status quo continue as it is or you can which is to me like you know ignoring putting your face you know your head in the sand not you know you know not listening or you can listen and educate and own to your mistakes and, and problems and issues and privilege and hopefully grow from that. Um, and to me, that is, to me, and I'm sure to probably everyone else maybe listening, that is the right way that's how we grow as a society but 
there are still people who will not want to shake the tree, will put their heads at the sand, and will choose not to listen. I had to deal with one of those this morning. No matter what we were saying, it wasn't connecting. And because it wasn't connecting or he was choosing not to connect to it, that told me all I needed to know. Mm. Like, you're either going to understand that maybe you might be wrong or you could be wrong or you're not going to and you're going to potentially be on the wrong side of history. I mean... Yeah. <sighs> Is there anything else? You okay? <laughs> um yeah. <laughs> sure. Okay. Drop the mic. <laughs> well, I mean the, the the reality is, you know that um this podcast is not a fair representation of the community. So mm-hmm. it's it's not an easy thing to have conversations mm-hmm. and to try to best represent and mm-hmm. also at the same time be like, hey, we know like like not only are we not perfect, we are not, you know, the authority by any mm-hmm. means to to say for certain things. Yeah. Um so yeah, I mean I think that Pride this year is a whole different thing because oh, yeah. now, you know, there's been discussions about, you know, I've seen, uh, you know, like there's always kind of been this swelling over the past couple of years about like who you give money to mm-hmm. and what they say, what they serve face to. But I've seen it escalated more or increased in a different way and be like, oh, so these big companies are like still being supportive of us. Mm-hmm. That's nice. Where is our representation on your board? Where mm-hmm. is your involvement in our community? Like, you can't just throw oh. money at us and not, like, I just expect that to be okay because that's not yeah. how it works. And it, and it goes to the point of, like, you know, where is the LGBTQIA representation within your organization? And what are you doing for those individuals? And now layered on top of that is what are you doing for your for individuals, you know, that are black or persons of color and also part of that community. Like, where's the intersection? How is that mm-hmm. happening? What's going on with that? And I find that really intriguing, you know, as a an ideal to bring to the forefront and hold people accountable to and be like, Mm-mm, careful, can't, mm-hmm. can't, can't, can't be, you know, just well, we gave you five thousand dollars. That's nice, <laughs> but you know, while while we appreciate the donation, that is not necessarily enough. Yeah. Funny, I'm trying to see if I can find it. I don't know if I'll find it in time, but um, it was kind of a a um, you know a big fucking wake up call to if like in relation to like you know, black and, 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 you know, fetishization. Um, if all your hookups are black men, but your friends at your dinner table are all white, what does that say about you? Okay. Yeah. I've been. I've, I'm. Hoping, I wish I could find it. I'm trying to see if I can find the person who posted. I know who. Po- I feel like I know who posted it, but I. Um. I don't know if I'll be able to find it in time. So. We can continue if we want, or we can. End the show or move on. I. Or... I, I, I think we've. <laughs> broccoli said our piece. Uh, yeah. For the start of the show. So we had that near the end in there. But uh, yeah, we had some links to some articles in regards to the Progress Pride flag. The one on the right. Mm. That side underneath Damon. Um, so uh, you can definitely check out the, those. Um, I'm not sure if the topic went where it was originally 
intending to, but I think we had a great discussion here, and uh, it was definitely all tea, no shade. Um, and and we said our piece, and hopefully we've uh, explain hopefully explained or, or, or shown our support for for everybody we in the past few few weeks uh we haven't really mentioned anything about uh everything that's been going on especially considering it started in my home state mm-hmm. um and i keep seeing things on the internet about us about podcasts that don't mention or say anything about this blah 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 blah, blah uh are, are not doing their part etc and uh i would apl- i want to apologize for that um we probably should have said something did something uh sooner about it but uh we just want to know we i think one of my favorite phrases that i learned from critical role in and uh, uh, uh the uh, uh after show uh tox machina is uh, don't forget to love each other and that's really it yeah um we need to make sure that i i can understand the role of police but police need to also love the people they protect and and be more along the protection route uh and yeah. uh and there's been a lot of things and a lot of statements. I've seen things about The Daily Show from uh, by John Oliver. I love John Oliver just because he goes in depth. While he does provide some humorous spins to things, a lot of the stuff that he talks about is very, very serious. You should definitely check on his um, uh, episode where he talks about uh, the police and what defunding the police means. Um, and, uh, and it just... I think those type of shows actually do say things in a way that makes sense for most people um, mm. uh, versus the flat out serious news shows. Um, and uh, so definitely uh, take a look at that and know that we are here for all of you and we want to hear what you have to say. Whatever. All tea, no shade. Um, give us a call uh, 361C we'll talk uh, there's other ways to contact us as well I'll wrap up the show mm-hmm. <laughs> that's on our website uh, comesoutloud.com got all the the links and everything right there on our about us page but that's comesoutloud at gmail.com uh, Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, YouTube at comes out loud in the appropriate place URL chat about all of this over on our telegram chat at tinygirl.com slash telegram dash col find out when we're recording these shows and hopefully we'll have a later topic next week uh oh it's, it's our what's going on next week is it yeah uh that's at tinygirl.com slash calendar dash col that you can do that uh you can get a proud out loud shirt or many of our uh pride consent is my four played shirts at zazzle.com slash cubs out loud and that's zazzle dot whatever your uh localization is slash cubs out loud uh you can become a patron patron and support us over at patreon.com slash cubs out loud uh and if you want to just give us a one-time donation to, uh, to help us out help us improve that our uh set up at paypal.me slash cubs out loud to do that you can read us on apple Podcasts, subscribe to us google play podcast and spotify you can find me anywhere in the internet says box set box puppy box cup box something or other um, if you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me at Theater Cup 79 on most bear related sites, um, all and also Facebook. Um, if you're reaching out to me on Facebook, just because of the way things have been so far recently, especially, um, just let me know that you're connecting with me from Cubs Out Loud. Um, or, or you can find me as pup underscore umbra on Twitter. FYI, that Twitter is very not safe for work. So just, just. There, there. It's a sprinkling of, of, like everything, but it's mostly not safe for work. So, yeah. A lot of retweets in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Gary, if you would like to get in touch with me online, you can pretty much find me anywhere as Gare Bear seventy three. Um, if you want the not safe for work Twitter, it would be Gare Bear seventy three xxx. Uh, and uh, uh, with that, um, I need to 
actually quickly do this. There we go. Um, take it out, everybody. Good night, everybody. Have a good one, y'all.